So here we go again with another Road to the Final player review. In this one today, we are going to be reviewing the 86 rated Road to the Final Wilfred Ndidi. If you want to get your hands on some coins to buy players like those featuring in this video, check out my sponsor in the description, igvault.com. And if you use the code Kieran at checkout, you'll get yourself a pretty big discount. Now, yesterday when I was actually predicting what cards were going to come today, Ndidi was one of the ones that I predicted, and it was one of the ones that I was hoping to see as well because. Like, I actually really liked his non-inform item at the start, so I'm looking forward to trying out this uh, boosted version of him because, uh, to be fair, it looks pretty good. And if Leicester can progress um, to a decent um, level in the Europa League, this card honestly could become absolutely outstanding. So uh, I definitely think it's one to watch out for. Um, anyway, this is the team we're going to be using him in. He is going to be playing in that CDM role. Um, I do play 4-2-3-1 in-game. However... I think what I'm going to do is go a bit more attacking. I'm going to bring in um, one of my attacking players in for Kante. And I think, you know what, we're going to play 4-1-2-1-2 so he can play as a lone DM. And we'll really test him out in that way. Can confirm that is what we're going to do. I'm going to switch in game to the 4-1-2-1-2 wide. And we are going to set up like this with uh, Ndidi as the sole DM. I'm not going to put any instructions on him for now. We're going to see how he plays naturally. So, uh... Yeah, let's do that. But uh, before we get into some games, let's have a look at his stats because currently we haven't done that. We're going to use a Shadow Chem style on him to uh, give him a nice uh, pace boost. He's got a 4-star weak foot, which is pretty useful for when distributing out the back. Medium high wear crates, also pretty ideal. There are no traits to discuss. So uh, in-game stats, the physicals and defending look awesome. Like The defending is actually really freaking impressive. And with the Shadow Chem style... Like, nearly all of his stats, like interception, stand tackle, and slide tackle, are all maxed out to 99 ratings. So that is obviously really, really good to see. And um, Physically, he's got really high aggression of 89 and pretty good strength of 80. And also, 94 stamina, so he should, in theory, be able to run for days. And he's 6 foot tall and has 92 jumping, so aerially, we do expect him to be a bit of a monster. Um, he's also got good reactions of 91 and a good short passing rating of 84. So, um, all in all, it looks pretty solid to be honest. So, let's get in some games. Let's see what Wilfred Ndidi has to offer. Okay, so in game one, Ndidi is certainly going to be tested because uh, he's going to have to handle a Eusebio. There we start for Ndidi as he does knock Eusebio off the ball, but we unfortunately ran back into trouble. Nice, Ndidi interception there not not too quick on the turn but did his job that's what's important Eusebio is going to try and run through here and Didi is going to try and keep up with him but he just hasn't got the pace and for whatever reason I had control of Ndidi there but the game player switched me I didn't press LB that's ridiculous that could have cost me a goal there at the break, we do have a 3-2 lead. Uh, Wilfred Ndidi has been pretty busy, to be honest. The whole defence has, because my opponent is absolutely running riot with that Eusebio card. It is just a nightmare to dispossess of the ball. Um, so we won't be keep keeping a clean sheet, but hopefully we can have a better defensive performance in the second 45. Here's Ndidi, involved in an advanced roll. Slides through the ball. Oh. Nice Ndidi. Closing down naturally and eventually getting the tackle there. Nice tackle there from Joe Gomez. And now we have a chance to come forward. Ndidi plays out wide and it's a good pass as well to Lucas. Who has the opportunity to whip the ball into the box. Oh, Ndidi sticks his leg out and gets the interception there. And now possibly an opportunity to attack. He threads through the ball for a Charlison who might net here and he does. And that's a nice assist for Ndidi. And we have ourselves a 4-2 lead. And after that goal, my opponent decides to rage quit, which actually quite surprises me because he was never out of that game. And that Eusebio of his was causing me a lot of problems. That card is absolutely nuts. Hopefully I can try it out at some point. In Ndidi's first outing, he was alright to be honest. Um, was quite busy in the first half and to be honest did struggle handling Eusebio because he's not quick enough on the turn to handle a player like Eusebio. But um, still was relatively solid and made a couple of key interceptions and also a few key passes too. Ndidi is going to have another tough test in this matchup. He has an Mbappe to uh, try and stop in this game. So, uh, yeah, the PC good dribbling attackers do not stop. Kyle Walker finds Ndidi. Not in an ideal situation. This game's a bit laggy, by the way. I haven't experienced much lag in FIFA 21, but this one, I think you can tell visibly, isn't that great. And look at that. Nice ball. Mbappe whips it in. Chance of Amiang. Equalizer. Game is so laggy. Have I got a penalty there? I have. And that's probably not even my opponent's fault. He probably timed it quite well. It's just the game is so laggy. 
Wilfred Ndidi, can he score his first goal for the club? You bet he can, from the spot, nice dink down the middle, and we have the lead. And after we got the third, my opponent decided to rage quit, which I'm actually glad about because that game was super laggy. I've generally not experienced lag like that all year long in FIFA 21. Defensively, NDD really didn't have too much to do in that game. Um, played through a nice pass and scored a penalty, and that was pretty much his game, to be honest. But, um... Yeah, got nothing bad to say about him from that game, to be honest. Um, all positive. We eventually get into another game, and interesting, it's a uh, free the back team. Don't see these too often, but it's uh, a pretty solid one. Pogba, uh, Bruno Fernandes, uh, Richarlison, and, uh, and Alex Teller's at left mid. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on against this side. Surely he'd get a better chemistry start in this team in a different manner, but um, whatever, let's go. The opponent does not really want to commit too many people forward, is it? And Didi. Puts in a nice tackle there, then sets Mane free down the wing. Nice and DD. Reaching out there to win that. And now maybe we can counter because of it. Oh, and big interception there from NDD. Reaching out his long legs to get that there. And the clearance is actually a fantastic ball as well for Mane. And now we got a chance to counter. That's a fantastic clearance. I'm going to try and put it to the back stick for Lucas. And unfortunately not make the most of it. But great play from NDD there. Saved us. And then 10 defence into attack. Well, half time's come around, and as you can see, it's been a pretty boring first half. We're actually going to switch to the 4 2 3 1 for the second half. I'm not actually switching because I think we need more defensive stability or anything like that. I'm switching because I want to try out uh, Ndidi alongside Kante because I feel like them two will complement each other quite well. Oh my god, I cannot clear the ball right now. Ndidi's in the back line as well. Oh, nice. Ndidi coming out of line to make the intercept there, and then does well to get the ball off to Kante as well. Oh, and Didi with a big tackle there in injury time, and that should, in theory, be game over as long as we don't. And Didi, once again, was just solid. Um, obviously, isn't going to get a particularly big match rating, but um, yeah, just did his job. And I like him more in a 2DM formation. I just feel like he's a bit more solid there as that stay back D DM and lets Kante do all the running because Ndd just doesn't quite have the pace and like turn ability to uh, keep up with some players but if he just sits and defends and lets Kante do the running for him um, he does feel uh, much more solid. Okay so now we've had a few outings with the road to the final Wilfred Ndd it's time to review performances and all in all I think this is a very good uh, defensive midfielder option. There are some notable things about this card which are really really good but there's also a couple of things that uh, definitely need to be improved because uh, they do let him down and obviously we are going to cover that. So uh, let's do the pros first. First of all, defensively, I thought he was very good. Surprise, a defensive midfielder is actually good at defending. I like the fact that he intercepts a lot. That's obviously a key part of that DM role. And his tackling ability was also to a good standard as well. He's one of them players who can just, you know, seem to grow an extra limb to, like, reach a ball, which is uh, kind of mad. But, uh, yeah, I like his tackling ability, slide tackling especially. So, uh, very happy with that area of his game. Also, physically very solid too. Um, seems very strong in the tackle and very aggressive and fights for the ball, which is nice. And his stamina um, just didn't seem to be... To, uh, I can't speak. Didn't seem to deplete is what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, he just had like bundles of energy for the full game. And also, aerially, he was very, very solid too. In terms of pace, I thought he felt quick, but not particularly rapid, even with the Shadow Chem style on him. So, uh, yeah, there is that. And uh, in terms of passing, I thought he passed to a decent standard, to be honest. Look, he's not a master distributor by any means. But for a DM, I think his passing is up to a good standard. And I think you saw that in the clips if you watched them. Because uh, he can certainly put through a good over-the-top through ball. And the short passing is also pretty nice as well. And with him having that four-star weak foot, he can distribute rather well off of both feet. Although I will add, I didn't think his left foot was as reliable as the right. But you probably did expect that. Um, I'm not going to like spend too much time talking about the shooting because, I'll be honest, I didn't really shoot with him. I took a penalty and that was it. But ultimately, he's a DM. You don't want to play him as a centre mid and uh, you definitely don't want to play him as a cam. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now we come on to the dribbling, which is the interesting part about this card for me. And um, This is the area that I think needs improving the most along with the pace. So, uh, obviously, he's not too easy to manoeuvre. He turns like a truck, to be honest. So, uh, definitely not a player that you want to be going on runs with. And that brings me on to my next point. Uh, it, and that is the fact that he just doesn't turn as quick as other DMs. Not just when he's got the ball, but when he doesn't have the ball as well. So, when he comes up against like the small, nimble, piercy attackers like your Eusebius, like your Mbappe, them kind of players, that's when this guy is going to become a bit unstuck. Because although he can catch up to them and he has the strength to push them off the ball, if they're turning a lot, then this guy's going to have a hard time just keeping up with that because, as I say, he's just not that quick 
on the 10. That's why I think this NDD card is so much better in a 2DM formation. Have this guy as you hold in DM and have a runner next to him. A player like a Kante or maybe a more box-to-box -box option because... Yeah, this guy is good at just standing in his place, keeping the position well, and uh, picking them intercepts and picking them tackles when he has to. He's very, very good at that. He's definitely a stay back while attacking CDM, in my opinion. If you don't use him in that role, I don't think you'll like him too much. So, uh, all in all, still a very solid DM option. And as I say, he does have potential to be really, really good in this game if he gets the right boost, and obviously that does uh, depend on Leicester progressing through the Europa League. Um, I definitely think he's so much better in a 2DM formation, so I, I don't think he'll have as much success if you use him in a single DM formation, so something to note there. Um, in terms of comparisons to other DMs, um, I think one that I can you know, put out there quite easily is One to Watch Party, a card that I've used a lot. I think One to Watch Party is currently better than this Road to the Final NDD, but um, obviously both are lab items, both have potential to be upgraded, and maybe like both could surpass each other um, through different times through the year. So uh, yeah, as I say, good card, and uh, potential to be very, very good, so uh, one to watch out for. I don't think he's worth 400k at the moment though, so I wouldn't advise paying that price tag. Anyway, I'm rambling, let's wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you have, please do drop a like on it. If if you got any questions pop them down below subscribe if you're new thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one